Every iPhone from the iPhone X onward hides one of the toughest challenges in modern board repair, the stacked or sandwich logic board. Two layers of copper, silicon, fused together by hundreds of microscopic solder balls and sometimes a stubborn ring of epoxy. If you're not careful, one wrong move can mean that you've lifted pads or worse, ruined the motherboard. I recently had a comment from Ad Gadget Wizard ask for me to please do a video on how to separate sandwich boards without destroying pads or overheating the board. So let's get started. Today let's talk about how to separate these boards safely without destroying the pads or overheating them. Using several different iPhone logic boards as examples, we'll go over all of the details that you might need to know from the iPhone X on onward. The secret to a clean separation starts long before you even touch the phone. Having the proper tools is going to definitely make the difference. Having a preheater, a reliable rework station, flux, and a few other things to get started. And finally, being made aware of the temperature that you should bring the, that particular board to, depending on its generation. Jumping right into it, here's a list of the board separation temperatures that I have found to be most accurate. So feel free to take a screenshot of this or tag this video so that you can come back to it when you need it. The iPhone 10 series, the preheat temperature for the hot plate should be around 160 Celsius. The 11 series, 165, along with the 12 series. The 13 series and the 14 series at 170. The 15, around 170 to 175, and the 16 series, 175. And I'm assuming the 17 series is also going to be the same. The reason for this is the slight changes in the generations with the potential epoxy used slash different alloys that were used throughout the years. And alongside these, I've listed out the hot air temperatures that I'd recommend using along with the airflow percentages. Now this may vary depending on your station, but I found that in between 350 to even 400 on hot airs will work depending on the model. So you can see here what I've stated, as well as a few notes regarding those models. I could read them out or you could just hit pause and take some time to go through them. Some of the logic boards have a 5G antenna, which means you may need to adjust or make adjustments to your hot plates. I like to take a Dremel to them and carve out the sections so that I don't have to remove the 5G antenna, as it is annoying to solder back on as it's a blind solder. And because the rest of the world doesn't have the 5G antenna, typically the tools don't come manufactured to, a, to account for it. Now here, we'll preheat the board on a reliable hot plate to somewhere around 165 degrees Celsius. And I'm gonna let it soak for at least three minutes. Obviously, I don't wanna overheat this, so it is something that you need to baby, something you want to continually check and see if you have any movement. And the entire board as it's doing this is actually going to expand. And if you do it correctly, it'll expand evenly. It'll soften the epoxy and it'll save you from the micro fractures later on. You don't want to shock the boards with extreme high temperatures or cooling them too quickly. And too many techs rush this step, causing pads to lift. And all the pads are fixable, as I've shown in videos, finding the teeny tiny vias that these pads connect to and attaching pads to them is not something that you'll want to spend your time doing. Note, adding flux around the perimeter a little bit, no, not overdoing it, will definitely help with this process. It prevents the solder from oxidizing too much, allowing things to flow around in a more of a lubricated fashion, making it easier to separate the sandwich boards. Think of it taking like, think of it like oil on a hinge, just enough to make the movement smooth. Depending on what you're working on, you'll set your hot air station between 360 and 380 degrees Celsius and a medium airflow around 45% with a medium nozzle about 8 to 10 millimeters away from the board. And you need to keep it moving. You never want to overheat a particular area. You always want to go in circular motions staying over the center zone of the sandwich. The goal is even heat, not blasting in one spot. 
This will definitely cause issues if you do with potentially the NAND, the CPU, the PMIC, other components on the top board that have underfill. You'll start to notice subtle cues where you'll get movement in the top board, where you can slide a tool in between the layers and give it a little twist and see movement where it'll start to pop. There are additional tools that you can use to help lift, but basically once you've got all of these steps done, you'll be able to pop the top board without resistance, without pulling pads. And if you do it in a vertically straight up fashion, you'll be able to prevent the solder from mixing and creating uneven solder balls because it will come down to one of two things. You'll either be reballing the whole thing or there is a way to reinstall it without reballing it. It's just a matter of how well you perform all of these steps up to this point. If you're willing to stick with the higher melting temperature solder or if you want to apply your own solder balls by reballing the entire sandwich board. Most board damage happens from too much heat too fast or skipping what I would call the initial pre-soak entirely where you let the board slowly heat up for those first three minutes to temperature or even jumping the gun and starting to lift too early when there's too much resistance thinking that the pads are going to be fine then finding out later that they were definitely not ready to let go yet. In this process, the difference between a perfect lift and destroying it could be the difference of 5 seconds. So be patient. The iPhone 10 through the 11 Pro solder reflow happens closer to 220 degrees Celsius internal core temperature. And from the iPhone 12 onward, Apple switches to a low temp alloy, meaning that it does separate easier, but it also warps easier. This is why precise temperature control matters more than ever. And that's how you separate an iPhone sandwich board safely. No pad damage, no overheating. Once you have it separated, letting things cool down is definitely the way to go. I recommend removing the motherboard from the heat plate and letting it cool down on the countertop. Don't add alcohol, don't shock the board. Let it cool down, it won't take too long, and that way you won't damage anything. But if you leave it on the heat plate, you could overheat things, especially cooking the CPU. And that's how you separate an iPhone sandwich board safely. No pad damage, no overheating, no stress. The secret isn't brute force or high temps. It's control, consistency, and respect for the materials. Uh -huh.